If you're looking at a fairly high-end espresso machine, a good choice would either be the ECM Synchronica or the Lamazoco Linear Micra. And I got the chance to live with both of these machines for a week and compare them. And it turns out there are some significant differences between them. So with the help and expertise of Dan from homebarista.com, we're taking a look at these two machines, looking at their differences and really pointing out how they would affect you when you're using these machines to brew your coffee. So you've had both of these to play with for a while now. Yes. Uh, so I'm sure you have an opinion. What do you think? The biggest difference between the two is, I mean, obviously this is now looks huge. It never looked very big before, but when you see it compared to the micro, it's massive. And with all of this stuff going on on the front as well, which is not, not present here. Um, the, the biggest difference though, is the distance between the drip tray and then the group head mm -hmm. It's much bigger. So when I'm making drinks, sometimes I'll make an iced espresso. This is going to be awfully tight that this, however, fits plenty of room. And then my wife likes big cups of coffee. So we'll use something like this or maybe something even bigger. And again, that just fits very easily under here where it's a bit of a struggle there. So that was mm. the kind of the first thing I noticed was the difference is that there's just, I had to use smaller glasses. Sure. Um, now, the other big difference is I turn this guy on five minutes later, it's ready. Turn this guy on hmm, some time later, 30 minutes or so. 25 is considered a minimum. Yeah. Some suggest even longer. Yeah, yeah. right. So, so that's another big difference. This is ready to go. Like you turn, I'll, I'll come downstairs, I'll turn it on and then I'll start grinding my beans. And by the time I've done all that, it's ready, ready to go. Since we're talking about the relative size, it's worth noting that this one will fit under typical cabinets, but not with a lot of clearance. Mm. In fact, uh, with some cabinets, depending if they're like 17 and a half inches, you would not be able to fit much as far as cups on top of it. And certainly not a mug. This one, on the other hand, uh, would fit under any cabinets. And even whether if you have cups on there, even if they're relatively large cups, they'll, they'll still fit. So the point I'm making here is, is that this was an excellent adaptation of a commercial group, the famous uh, E61, to home uh, friendly sizes. But even so, it wasn't designed with that initially in mind, where this one was from the get-go, mm -hmm. let's make this more proportional to a home environment. One thing to consider that uh, I'll point out is there's also what I call the significant other factor. In other words, is the person whose kitchen you might be intruding into, are they going to approve? And uh, this is a lot less likely to offend the sensibilities of someone who prizes their countertop space. This fits in spaces on my home bar that this does not. Mm. Um, yeah, to, to go back to your point about the cup storage as well, not only is this lower, but you can use this whole thing to warm your cups. Whereas this, the back there is a flap where you put the water. Right, so I right. tend to need to keep that clear. Um, so I can't use the whole top for warming. Whereas with this one, you add the water by moving this out. So. Well, there's another benefit you might not have realized with that is that when you have the reservoir inside the machine, it obviously the water itself is going to be warmed. And in fact, it's going to be 120 degrees mm. I've measured or so. It depends on the machine, but it's going to be warm. It's not gonna be room temperature. Whereas this, it's located beneath the machine. And so the water in this reservoir is going to be near room temperature, not here. And so there's the convenience you mentioned about being able to access the reservoir. But the other thing is, is that you don't have to worry about the water being heated. And some people get a little fussy about that because they're concerned about bacteria growth or whatever. I, I'm not gonna go there. Um, but I think you'll find here, since we're talking about reservoirs, this one also, I don't know if you noticed, is a lot easier to clean. You, okay, you talk, we've talked an awful lot about the size differences and that, you know, that's a big plus. And you mentioned some of the usability differences. Can mm. you kind of compare and contrast them? You mentioned the warm up time, but what about actual usage? Very similar, mm. very similar. The, I mean, I learned to brew espresso on this machine. Mm -hmm. So it was a case of, can I transfer what I know to this machine and um, really the only difference is that this guy has on and off positions and this guy has 
dials. Mm. So if I don't turn this dial enough, for example, I will only get steam coming through at half speed. Right, and right, stuff like right. That. Whereas this doesn't give you that option. It's on or it's off. That's it. So that was the only thing. And that's what caught me out a couple of times at first is I would just like turn this on and say, oh, it's on now. And then I'd be like, why is my milk not getting hot? And that's because I just turned it on enough to let a little bit of steam out, but not enough. A lot of times this is considered a premium feature. This is you now the toggle type mm. of steam wands. Um, this is a traditional one. And in fact, if you look at it, people used to do this, the high speed spin on this knob when they're a barista working for many years. And so I, I think they wanted to recapture that sort of a familiar classical look in a small footprint. One other thing worth mentioning is that uh, you see this big uh, switch on the front. And I call it a switch because it is not a brew group where it changes the brew pressure. It's simply an on or off switch. Right. And some people say, why didn't they just use a button, you know, a switch or something like that? And I don't know if you really thought about that, but uh, with here you have uh, a brew lever that you lift up, mm -hmm. uh, which serves a real purpose. It, it, it does actually help with the, the way the pressure ramps up. And this one is simply activating the pump. Okay, so you said the steaming on the other hand, you felt those were... I think potentially this is steaming slightly faster, potentially, mm. but I'm not sure. Both of them pretty easy to use steam ones, easy to keep clean. Um, the, the advantage this guy has is it's longer, so it can work with bigger jugs potentially. But again, I've used a 16 ounce jug with this guy and it was fine. This this part though, I find this gets in the way. So this is the um, just the hot water spout. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm always having to like do that so I can access that's true the enough. handle. So that's kind of in the way a little bit. Um, and it doesn't seem necessary. Like, I guess it's cool that I can now, you know, spout it out in this direction, but this just has this, this here, you just put it under. Um, it's very unobtrusive, I'll, I'll give you that. Right, it's just uh, one less thing in the front to deal with and move out of the way and clean. Well, one thing you also, this, you know, some people use this for making Americano mm -hmm. water. Um, right. Personally, I'm not a fan of doing that because that's pulling water from the steam boiler. And personally, I prefer to have fresher water. Uh, so I'll either use, if I'm making an Americano, um, I'll either use a, a hot pot to, uh, to get the hot water. Uh, but here, I think from a taste perspective, you know, steam boiler water doesn't sound very attractive. It is though handy because you can use that to pull water out of the steam boiler to avoid mineralization. So hey, pro tip, don't forget, is that uh, steam out is distilled, right? Distilled water out, mineralized water in, what's going to happen? You're gonna get scale. A scale you're gonna get. Yeah. So you please remember, you have to flush the boiler regularly, especially if you're a big cappuccino fan. Yeah. There's one other thing I wanted to mention, a difference between these two. Mm which is this has a display on the front, a PID on the front. Mm. And that tells me the temperature. So I can see that I've set it to 90 mm. Celsius. And as soon as you click this arm to, to start pouring, it starts a timer. Ah, yeah. So right. then I know I'm, I'm looking at the timer and um, I want to know how long I've been pulling the shot for. Right. That tells me. And as soon as I stop it, it stops the timer and it leaves the timer on the screen. So I know that pull took 26 seconds and I, mm -hmm. I know I know next time whether I need to grind find it or, or, or not. There is no display whatsoever on this thing. So I'm using my scale to, to take the place of that um, timer. But I find the PID very useful on, on that guy. That's true. The, uh, the PID display, you don't see it here, but it's actually behind the drip tray here. Uh, it, the setting for it mm. uh, on some models. I think in this specific model, you can adjust it directly but it's real common for uh, manufacturers of these types of equipment to locate the electronics directly below, uh, behind the drip tray. So you don't see them up front for the setting, but you do have it for a shot timer. That's one thing that's really convenient. Here, they went for a very minimalistic approach. Uh, and you can see that it has no electronics display. And that's been a bit of a sore spot for some people because they want to be able to see what is the temperature right away. And for that, you have to, bring out an application that's on your phone and see what the temperature setting is. And you have to connect it via Bluetooth to yours. Um, there's kind of the good news and bad news about that. The good news is it offers you a lot of flexibility, things that you can do potentially, things like being able to program in brain fusion and whatnot. The, the less uh, good news is that you're dependent on an application now that connects to your machine via Bluetooth. So 
that's a trade-off that a lot of people have been discussing in the forums and we'll see how well that's accepted once it's in market and i believe when you put it on you said you had to log in and all that sort of stuff as well it does have a login uh, we've given feedback to la marzocco that we think it'd be a lot wiser to have a bluetooth only with no login required uh, i did notice when i was using the app just the other day that it has a a feature that says offline i haven't really played with that much but i think that would make a lot more sense than requiring that i have wi-fi enabled because i, I may well not right whereas this i can set the temperature i can see what temperature i've set it to it's all good um so yeah that was that's the that bigger difference um that said i mean once you set a temperature you're probably going to stick with it i don't know maybe if you're doing a lot with single origin so beans and whatnot it. you might change it but i've never changed temperature on any of these so uh, once it's set i'm good so I don't, I don't need to be seeing it every time i pull the shot well some people they, they like to tweak the brew pressure they like to uh, tweak the brew temperature mm -hmm. and if that's something you want to do very often uh that might be a concern for you right personally i tend to pick mostly around 201 as a brew temperature that works for many but if you're doing something that's a really highly acidic single origin you're going to want to ramp up the temperature a little bit and then for in this case you need uh an application and in this case you'd be able to do it directly on some of the face yeah, yeah now one thing we haven't touched on it's a bit of a elephant in the room is what about price and you know these uh this is actually as e61s go this is near the top of the list price wise it's a, it's the, a premium model it has premium features like uh, the now, we don't have the stock portafilter there, but it has uh, a premium portafilter and steam wand and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. A lot of features. This one still, though, is less expensive by a pretty wide margin than this smaller uh, friend over here. What would you offer advice for doing that? I mean, how did you react to that, that, that price point? Yeah you would think just to look at them that clearly this one's more expensive right <laughs> it's bigger it's got more stuff going on on the and front. it's heavier quite honestly it, it is significantly heavier i mean i guess people are not picking these up and taking them places very often but if you are like say you're taking this on vacation or something this is nothing to pick up this is a ordeal so yeah in terms of price i don't know they're both both up there in the high end they are right? they are so, they are you you don't have to spend a fortune for an espresso machine um, you can do something uh, that is simple as a lever espresso machine which is far less expensive has a smaller footprint heats up more quickly they sometimes require a little more skill they don't necessarily have the steaming capacity so there is that as a possibility um, and there is a case of diminishing returns i would argue We're, we don't really we won't get into where those breakpoints occur but when you get to an E61 double boiler, uh, you know, it's a very satisfactory experience to work with. And there are ones that are a little bit less uh, premium than this one that you can get. On the other hand, uh, I would argue if this falls into what I call the rare air category, which means something that you're really going to use every day for many, many years, it might be worth considering. Right. Because I, I, I tell you in the forums, so many people start out with low-end equipment and then they slowly migrate up and up and up the stack and that's not necessarily, that's not necessarily a bad thing they learn along the way but sometimes it's worth thinking about you know jumping ahead of the queue yeah i'm, I'm familiar with this from from brewing because i started with just like a brew bucket and plastic and whatnot but that was to establish am i going to keep doing this but once i did then i went up to the next level and then I had to sell that and I went up to the next level. Look, if you are, if you start using one of these machines and you're pulling shots and there's other people in your house, they're going to want some too, for right. sure. Uh, this and then this have been some of the most used appliances in our house since they've been here. So yeah, I think that's a good point. Like there is diminishing returns. And if I had a $7,000 machine alongside a $3,000 machine, I don't know that I could tell the difference. Right, right. Uh, but I could probably tell the difference between a $3,000 machine and an AeroPress espresso. Oh, no, so, no doubt, no so. doubt. <laughs> okay, so here we are. You get, the, you get the last word. What would you say your final impressions, E61 versus uh, Micra? Uh, I don't have a definitive answer, like if you're just trying to choose between them. To me, I can't compare one over the other. I can only compare having one to not having one mm. and the that there are so many benefits to having your own espresso machine that can really 
perform a very consistent consistent pour um, over time and just really the the quality of the coffees that you get out of this we've been tasting some of the coffees today mm -hmm. and so good so yeah. good you do not need to be uh, you know a world-class barista to get an extremely delicious coffee out of these machines they do a lot of the work for you to do that so yeah no thanks for letting me try both of these because it's been it's been hugely fun a final thought from from Dan at home barista is that it's difficult to make this as a buying decision. You're welcome to join the forum and look at prior uh, discussions that have looked over the trade-offs. Maybe you see ones that you'll relate to. And also there's a tips and technique forum. So that way, if you want to really shortcut the learning curve, there are literally hundreds of people who have traveled that same path in the forums. Learn from them, and if you have specific questions, be sure and join the forum, participate in the conversation, post your videos, photos, etc., and you'll be able to benefit from what the forum's been bringing to other people. Well, Dan, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling quite caffeinated and ready for the day. <laughs> okay, great.